Of course, the goddess of Batley was Shirley Bassey. And um, <clears throat> Derek Smith was always telling me <clears throat> what a, a, a great attraction she was there, which, of course, she was, because she didn't make all that many personal appearances in this country. And I was, she followed me in. I arrived uh, Saturday evening for the Saturday evening show, and she was opening the following Sunday. And uh, I opened the dressing room door, and I tripped over these trunks that were full of musical arrangements. <clears throat> and I said, Derek came in, I said, Derek, what's all this about? I said, oh, they're Shirley. Because he used to talk like that. He probably still does. The goddess of Bali, or Shirley. I said, well, Shirley isn't on till Sunday. I'm on tonight. They're in my way, you know. So, all right, well, I'll get rid of them. But Shirley, I don't know like removing these, you know. So I said, I don't care what Shirley wants. Move them, because they're in my way. And um, then I went in the other room, and there was sort of a, a, a big flat, what looked like a piece of wood, you know, full-length piece of wood in paper. I said, Derek, what's this? It's all this stuff over, over the place. It's a full-length, no, for Shirley, you see. So <laughs> I said, oh, well, stick it up, you know, stick it up on the wall where it belongs. But we used to laugh about things like that, you know, and I, I, I used to, uh, <clears throat> if anything went wrong, I used to say to Derry Smith, you know, this wouldn't happen to Shirley, would it? I remember one night she, she came on stage and she was singing and nobody else noticed, but one of the musicians wasn't playing the right notes. And then she did the show, the taps closed, curtains closed, and then she did a, came out and threw her arms around the conductor, what she normally does and very happy with the applause because she got a tremendous applause. And then she came through the curtains and she knew which musician was playing the wrong notes and she made it a run at him. The poor chap, he dropped, I think it was a trumpet, he dropped his trumpet, run out of the back doors, that's the stage doors at the back, the entrance, and Shirley Bassey was after him on the car park trying to get hold of him. I'm sure she would have killed him. And as far as chasing one around the car park, I, I don't know this story. <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> Unless I fancied them, but I don't think it was. <laughs> we had tremendous audiences every night. You know, and when I say every night, because I was there three weeks at a time, you know. I mean, the table was about that big, and you saw eight people with pints of beer like that, you know. And, uh, and the clinking of glasses is. It was very strange, but they would close the bar while I was on because I was on in my contract. So if you wanted a drink, you had to order just before I went on. And otherwise, while I was on, you, you, you had it, you know, you had to die of thirst. But they, they made sure they didn't because they just stacked them up, you know. Well, uh, James Corrigan said um, one night, you've got to have fish and chips while you're badly. I mean, it was just the place to take you. So when would you like to go? And that's after the show. I said, well, uh, Friday, I think it was, or uh, Saturday. And I got all dressed up. You know, put my best cocktail dress on, you know, my best high heel shoes, my little mink jacket. And they took me to a fish and chip shop. <laughs> and I thought they would take me to a restaurant. You know? thought, yeah, wait a minute. Uh, As so I walked into the dressing room, I arrived, yeah. I opened the, I, I couldn't get in, actually, for boxes and boxes of Mars bars, because James found out that I used to wake up in the middle of the night and eat a Mars bar. And um, he had planned all these Mars bars. Well, I tell you, I had those Mars bars for years and years, <laughs> and I've never eaten a Mars bar since. I can't, I can't look at one in the face. You know. And when the opposition you know, sort of approached me. Uh, of course I didn't go, even though they offered me more money. I am... I like James Corrigan very much. And I was very happy to work for him. And uh, nobody else, nobody could take me away from him. Special was, uh, of course, James Corrigan. You know, he, he made the whole thing happen. He was special.